300 pound creep tries to pull my swimsuit strap off, so I devised a plan to ruin his life. Here's what happened. Subscribe to Am I the Jerk on YouTube and hit the bell for notifications. The year was 2014 and I was a freshman in high school. On a general basis, it sucked. I mean, it was an American public high school with literally thousands of kids. It's a given that it's not going to be a fun time. One thing in particular that made it extra sucky though was gym class. Specifically this one guy in gym class. This dude's name was Jerkface McGee. As the name would imply, he was a jerkface. At first, it was pretty standard high school guy in gym class level of obnoxious jerk. You know the type. Overly loud, unreasonably aggressive during games, bossy, tossing the collective brain cell back and forth between his two equally ape-like buddies, the usual. I don't know when exactly it happened, but he sort of developed an eye for me after the first couple of weeks or so. He started asking me bizarre questions that I now believe may have been some sort of innuendo. Sitting uncomfortably close to me, resting his hand on my gym shoe, generally creepy behavior. He once blocked a doorway with his body, and this dude was massive, forcing me to literally squeeze my way through and crawl over him. He then tried to grab me and pin me to him once I was almost through, but I'm very good at dodging physical contact whenever possible, and dipped on him before his giant gorilla arm could catch me. I still shudder thinking about it. I cannot emphasize enough how terrible this dude smelled. But the true breaking point came during the peak cruelty of this school mandated sadism, Jim Swim. Before anyone asks, let it be known that yes, I did try to tell someone about this. I told my gym teacher first semester really early on that Jerk was making me incredibly uncomfortable. The gym teacher waved it off saying he was just playing around and that it's probably because he likes you. His suggestion was basically just to put up with it and wait it out because he was sure Jerk would lose interest soon anyways. Spoiler alert, he didn't. Second semester rolls around and the four Four week period of gym swim descends upon us like the bloated carcass of a catapulted whale crushing us beneath its wet, foul-smelling body. Forty-some-odd adolescents forced into a cold, overly chlorinated pool for 50-plus minutes adorned in swimsuits determined to crawl up our butts like Ant-Man himself. Basically, it was miserable. As I've mentioned in a previous post, I'm autistic, so the echoing sounds reflected fluorescent lights, pungent odors, slimy floors, and assorted BS made the situation even worse for me. I wasn't officially diagnosed yet, so my complaints were written off as me being whiny, and I was told to shut up and deal with it. So I did. I think I had more meltdowns in that four week span than I've had in the past two years combined, but whatever. On top of the sensory overload, there was jerk. I think something about being allowed to go shirtless and stare at the nearly bare butts of girls for an entire period emboldened him, because Jerk promptly lost whatever semblance of restraint he'd had until then. He made frequent attempts to grab me, trying to hold me against his bare skin, which was disgusting, and I spent most of the class trying to evade him. The swimsuit I was forced to wear fit a little awkwardly around my chest, which he was delighted in pointing out to his buddies, staring unabashed at my breasts. He managed to sneak up behind me and snap the strap of my swimsuit, even trying to pull it down off my shoulder. But I jerked away fast enough to prevent that. I was furious at this point, but I'm like 5'2", maybe, whereas he was easily over 6'5", and probably 300 plus pounds. So I'm not stupid. While all of this was happening, my new gym teacher, they switched every semester, was busy trying to keep a couple of the other guys from drowning each other. She was one adult forced to watch over 40 rowdy kids in a swimming pool. She was a bit preoccupied. The final straw came one Wednesday afternoon, the event that finally pushed me off the edge of the rationality I'd been clinging to and sent me plumbing into a full-on bloodthirst. There I was, paddling around, minding my own business, when Jerk and his two goons managed to corner me. I'm immediately suspicious. Hackles raised, as they ask me fairly bland questions about how the pool is today and the like sniggering the whole time. I give short, terse answers, trying to see if I could maybe slip past them. 
I see an opening and bolt for it, but Jerk was apparently expecting this. As I swim through the narrow gap between him and one of his friends, he stretches out his arm and actually manages to slip his hand under my suit and grab me. I froze for a moment. The delighted giggling of him and his friends echoed in my ears as if from a thousand miles away. The next thing I knew, I was out of the pool, being held back by the gym teacher and Jerk had a bloody nose. He was shouting angrily at me, calling me a crazy B word, as his nose gushed blood into the water. There was mass confusion among the class. I was told to change quickly and sit in the hall. Apparently the gym teacher had heard me screech like a banshee, followed by a number of shouts, and had looked over to see me wrestle out of Jack's grip, jump on his back, and throw him off balance enough to smash his face into the edge of the pool wall. I remembered none of this, but I did find a few chunks of greasy brown hair clenched in my fist that I'd evidently ripped from his scalp when the teacher pulled me off. I washed my hands thoroughly. It was decided that I'd go in early to school tomorrow to have a little talk with the dean. They would have just sent me there straight away, but Jim was my last class of the day, and the dean had already left by then for whatever reason, so it had to be postponed a little while. It was pretty heavily implied that I was going to be suspended or quite possibly even expelled for what had happened. I was furious. Not only had Jack made my life miserable, but his horsing around was now going to be the cause of my expulsion. I wasn't going down without a fight, but I realized I'd have to play this pretty smart if I wanted to weasel out of it. The next morning, I did two things. I put on mascara and I made a superficial but rather painful incision on my right thigh, high enough so as to be covered by my shorts. Normally, I hate wearing makeup because I don't like the way it feels, but I'd worn mascara before and noticed the interesting effect it had on my appearance. Specifically, I already have pretty long, pretty dark eyelashes, so adding mascara draws a lot of attention to my eyes and makes them look huge. Like total Bambi, eyes wide, innocent, naive, and harmless. I sat down in front of the Dean at 6.40 a.m. I didn't need to fake the fear in my expression, but I made sure to throw in something that could be interpreted as guilt, too, bowing my head and twisting my face in dismay. Needless to say, the Dean was pretty ticked. Do you know why you're here, young? lady? Yes. And do you know what you did is very serious? Y yes. Care to explain yourself then? I, I, I just wanted him to stop. Stop what? I I just wanted him to stop touching me. As I said this, I reached my hand under the table where he couldn't see it and dug my finger into the cut on my leg, causing me to lurch forward as if in a sob. My other hands covered my face as my eyes watered from the pain. Touching you? His eyebrows were so furrowed at this point that they now look like they were on a collision course for Mars. I spent the next several minutes divulging all the crap that had happened to me that year, digging into my injury for some tears whenever necessary, and by the end of it, the dean looked horrified. He reaffirmed that no, I shouldn't have attacked Jerk like that, but that they'd have to investigate the matter further. I basically got off with a slap on the wrist, and after multiple testimonies from other girls, Jerk got suspended for two weeks. I wasn't satisfied. They hadn't been able to expel him due to a lack of hard evidence, but I was out for blood. He returned to school two weeks later, and I was ready. One of his friends had a little brother in my bio class, a fairly chill dude named Owen, who I'd worked out a deal with. See, Jerk had been very vocal about his displeasure with me to his friends, which made its way to Owen, who, for the low, low price of bailing his dumb butt out of biology, was more than willing to share that information with me. I had a direct pipeline. Anything Jerk shared with his friends made its way directly to me via Owen. And as it turns out, this dude didn't keep a whole lot to himself. There was a lot of crap I was tempted to nail him for. For instance, I found out he was selling substances from his locker and had been cheating his way through most of his classes. However, I knew how suspicious it would look for me to report something like that so soon. I'd probably just look like I had a grudge, which I did and I was just trying to get even, which I was. He slipped up really, really bad about a week after his return, and that was when I struck. 
See, he hadn't been subtle about his displeasure with my retaliation, and spent most of gym class sending really ugly looks my way. The gym teacher kept us as far away from each other as possible, but he managed to track me down in a passing period one day and rant at me about how bad I'd screwed him over, and that I was a lying little b-word and yada yada yada, and that he'd make me regret it. Funny. Stole the words right out of my mouth. I found out later from Owen that Jack had been bragging to his friends last night about the knife he'd stolen from one of those hunting stores downtown, and promised he'd show it off to them later that day. I seized the opportunity. I took a few seconds in the bathroom mirror, scratching at the scab on my leg until my eyes were teary, enough to really sell the terrified victim look, then bolted down to the dean's office, stuttering and shaking, crying for help. The front desk lady was understandably startled by the sight of a seemingly panicked freshman girl bolting into the office and called the dean out right away. His face grew very serious when he saw me. Mr. Dean, please help. He He attacked me. Now, slow down. What happened? Jerk, I said, resisting the urge to grin maniacally at the hardness that appeared in the dean's eyes. He he cornered me in the hall. He called me the B word and said he was going to make me regret telling on him. He, he's got a knife. He what? Everything moved very quickly after that. The security guards were told to search the kid's locker, while a couple of other security guards were called down to get Jerk out of his classroom and take him to the office. I was told by the front desk lady who had heard the whole exchange to hide with her in the copier room so Jerk wouldn't see me. They found the stolen knife in his backpack and the substances in his locker. That, combined with the previous charges, was enough to get him not only expelled, but arrested. I never saw him again, which is probably a good thing because I'm still mad and would probably have taken a run at him if given the opportunity. The worst part of this story is that you had to go to these lengths to get anything done about it. This whole situation is incredibly creepy and uncomfortable. You're a pretty tiny girl and he's a really big guy that's coming at you. You've made it clear you're not interested and he doesn't seem to care. That's a scary situation for any girl. And now you're forced to spend time with him in a bathing suit and all that, it's just asking for trouble. It sounds like this behavior was going on over a long period of time, so something should have been done about it before it escalated to this point. And you defending yourself shouldn't be something that you need to defend. He should feel lucky he only got away with a bloody nose. I really don't blame you for doing whatever you had to do to get rid of this guy. He sounds like nothing but problems. You can submit your own stories to be featured here on the channel. The story submission link is in the description below. And if you want to listen to some vibey music in the background, check out Easy Mode, also linked below. And don't forget to subscribe. Karen won't get out of the handicapped parking spot, so we block her in. This happened a few days ago. I'm recovering from abdominal surgery 12 days prior to when this happened. I was finally feeling up for shopping and there were things I needed from the hardware store. I'm a 30 year old disabled female in a wheelchair, incomplete quadriplegic, and I don't have a car. So I got a taxi there, one with a ramp on the back so I don't have to get out of my wheelchair. Mr. Taxi Man, who we'll call Bruce, dropped me off and I went in to do my thing. Nothing out of the ordinary. When I finished my shopping, I called to get the taxi back. It would be a 15 minute wait, but it was such a nice day that I didn't mind waiting outside. As I was waiting, I noticed that someone was parked in the disabled parking space, but there was no disabled tags on the windscreen. Annoying, but I honestly didn't care at that point. I just wanted to get home. About 10 minutes later, I saw a middle-aged woman walk out of the store and go straight to that car. She opened the trunk, put her shopping in, and went around to the driver's side. But instead of getting in, she got out a cigarette and started looking at her phone. A few minutes after that, I saw my taxi arrive. Bruce, being the polite and patient man he is, waited for the woman to drive out of the spot. Karen knew he was waiting for her, and she knew she was parked illegally in the disabled parking space. But do you think she cared? She finished her cigarette and got into her car. We waited, and waited, and then waited some more, until Bruce got really fed up and parked the taxi right behind Karen's car, blocking her in. This is when things got interesting. Karen began to honk her horn repetitively for a few seconds before she got out of her car. 
What the bloody heck do you think you're doing? You blocked me in. I'm very sorry, ma'am, but I needed the car space, and you seem to want to stay there. Just thought I'd do you a favor. Now, if you don't mind, I have a job to do. Bruce gestured in my direction as I gave Karen a big smile. I hate confrontation, so I appreciated Bruce for doing it for me. Bruce got into the car and fastened me and my wheelchair into place, all the while with Karen yelling profanities and threatening to call the police. If it were any other day, I would have been happy to call the police so Karen would get a fine, but I just wanted to go home. It only took a few minutes before I was secured in the car and we left, but I made sure to give Karen a smile and a one-finger salute through the window as we were leaving, which made the encounter all the more sweet. We've gone over ones like this in the past. Don't park in disabled parking if you don't need it, guys. Now, apparently this lady was middle-aged, so maybe she did have a reason for initially needing the spot, whether she was technically allowed to park there or not. The jerk part comes in when she knew the spot was needed and decided to stand around and have a cigarette instead. There was no reason for you to still be using that space. You knew it was needed and chose not to move. You're choosing to be a jerk. Like our original poster said, you're lucky she didn't have more time to waste, or maybe you would have had a ticket on your hands as well. I think you should just call it a win. You got off easy, honestly. I got mistaken for the press and got to meet three prime ministers as a result. Back in 89, Ray Natishin was sworn in as Canada's new governor general, the Canadian representative of the crown. This was a big deal for me because I was best friends with his son. So my mom and I got invited to the inaugural gala in Ottawa. We were flown in a Gulf Stream, I'd never been on a plane before, and would be staying at the Rideau Hall, the governor general's official residence. To properly document this August event, I borrowed my uncle's very expensive, very impressive looking camera and lenses, and also got a new suit. I felt pretty darn important for a shy 10th grade kid. Anyway, I was waiting in line with the rest of the plebs to be ushered in to stand at the back in the House of Commons, when I was approached by two RCMP officers who asked me to step out of the line. Of course, my immediate thought was, oh crap, what did I do? They informed me that I was in the wrong line, and to please go with them. Confused, I look around and then down at myself, and saw the expensive camera dangling from my neck, partially obscuring the lanyard that allowed me onto the grounds. Holy crap, they thought I was press. I always looked older than my actual age back then. I glanced over to my mom and she silently mouthed, go, and so off I go to the press gallery. The RCs plot me into a cluster of photographers from the national press, and suddenly I'm sharing the same bird's eye view as Sandy Ronaldo and Peter Mansbridge, the Barbara Walters and Tom Brackow of Canada. I snap away happily and hobnob with members of the Fifth Estate for a bit and head for the stairs to go find my mom. Mom. Once again, I'm stopped by the RCs. Well, the jig is up, I thought. Sir, the press conferences are through the other exit behind you. What the what? Once again, I'm led into another room I have no business being in, and in the span of 20 minutes, I've met Trudeau, Mulroney, Chrétien, Bouchard, Turner, Clark, and a pack of others. These names might not mean much to non-Canadians, but trust me, these were some of the biggest, haunchiest honchos in Canadian politics for three decades. The only ones who knew I didn't belong were Ray himself and Roy Romanow, my province's future premier. They just did a double take and thought the whole thing was hilarious. Never ratted me out. Classy guys. So there you go. Three prime ministers, one former, one current, and one future. All because I didn't own my own camera. I feel like somebody could have lost their job for this. This could have been a major security issue if this wasn't just some harmless 10th grade kid. Let's put that aside though and just accept that this kid got to do something not a lot of other people get to do. Being Canadian myself, I can confirm that there were quite a few big names there. At the very least, a lot of you may have heard of Trudeau. Our current prime minister is Justin Trudeau. The Trudeau they're referring to here was his father, Pierre. But either way, we've got some big names in Canadian politics here. As our original poster said, not one, not two, but three prime ministers were met during this encounter. You know that's something you're going to remember for the rest of your life. I gave beer to my three-year-old niece. Yeah, it sounds bad, but it really was an innocent thing. 
I was at a cookout with my wife's family, and I just opened up a cold one. My wife's three-year-old niece asked me what I was drinking, and I told her it was beer. She asked to taste it, so I poured like a tenth of a sip into a plastic cup, thinking it would be too bitter for her. But, well, she liked it. She wanted more, and I told her it was a grown-up drink but it was too late. She ran around demanding to drink more beer for the entire cookout. She wouldn't eat anything, just demanded beer, and they had to put her in a timeout. Anyway, the in-laws are mad now, and the wife isn't happy. So, am I the jerk? Okay, while I might understand initially wanting to do it just to see her reaction, you gotta know that that's not a good idea. Your adult judgment should have kicked in at that point. No matter what way you slice it, it doesn't sound good. When you start the story off with, yeah, it sounds bad, you already know you messed up. When you subscribe, make sure to hit the bell to turn on notifications. Put the playlist on in the background to finish listening to all the stories. Or if you want some vibey music to put on in the background, check out Easy Mode. If you like Am I the Jerk, give Am I the Genius a shot. Everything linked in the description.